I, like I was saying before, I think everything feels good, but just for whatever reason, I'm not figuring out how to put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not 100% sure whether that's course management, whether that's you know trying to hit shots that don't match my style, um, maybe a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. But there's there's some kind of disconnect that I'm trying to figure out that. You know, why, why do I feel like I'm playing as well as the guys next to me and they're shooting 68 and I'm shooting 73? Yeah. Hey guys, my name is Michael Vanderland. I'm uh, starting to work with Kyle with Mental Golf Type, learning about my personality type and how I can apply it to create a better process for myself and be a better competitor. I am the 2019 NCAA Division II National Champion. Um, as well as some other successes throughout my golf career. I turned pro in May of 2019 and I've had some success. And I'm really looking to use mental golf type and learn from Kyle on how to use my mind and use my personality to maximize the potential that I have. One thing that I've always been really frustrated about is that I just can't seem to sustain a high level of play. You know, I'll play well for a little while and then kind of lose it a little bit and then figure it out, come back, play well, and go through that whole cycle. And I really am looking forward to continuing to kind of work hard and figure out who I am as a golfer and continue to make those strides. So really excited to be working with Mental Golf Type, to be learning from Kyle, and I can't wait to see where the future takes us. Okay, so Michael is an ISFP, and he has a lot of game, but there's obviously some disconnects there, which you can kind of hear him talk about, and you know, the goal of this whole show is to expose him and show the qualities of an ISFP and show him where he's really at his most optimal, so we're going to do some really cool things throughout this series, but first thing we got to tackle down is just where he's you know, getting disconnected with how he's wired. Like how often are you going to birdie with wedge in hand? Not as often as I should. Yeah. Uh, maybe 35%. Like, I do not like a 65-yard wedge shot. Okay. I can hit a 60, I can hit a 70. But 65, for whatever reason, I cannot figure out how to get that quite right. Okay. All right. Well, let's go 65. Let's, let's yeah. just see it. See what we can do. Most of my misses with wedges are bad distance. Okay. You know, a lot of the time when I have this 65-yard wedge shot, I fly at 67. Mm -hmm. And so it takes one hop to 70 and checks. Yeah, yeah. And I've got 19 feet. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, I would love to be able to be more comfortable saying I need to fly this 62, get it to take that one hop, and now I've got to tap in. Yeah, okay. I think I had, I had maybe this shot three times on Monday, and all three of them I flew it pin high. So when, when you're controlling distance with wedges or anything, do you have some sort of system that you use? Are you worried about length of swing, trying to feel it? Like, what are you doing there? I loosely use kind of a clock system mm -hmm. with my arms. Um, now I say loosely because I know like with my 56, a nine to three is gonna fly 56 yards. Mm -hmm. You know, I know those numbers um, and I used to be more, I used to dive into it a lot more Mm -hmm. But what I've found over time is that I think way too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so tried to kind of still use it, but be more of a feel oriented player in terms of my wedge game. And just, you know, be able to kind of in my head say, I need to fly this 62 yards and try to just let my body react to that. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think that's your first disconnect right there. Okay. You know, because. Like you kind of overheard Maddie and I talking the other day. It's like, this is what sports psychology is going to tell you is mm -hmm. react, mm -hmm. you know, react to the target. The problem is there's nothing to react to. Right. Golf's not a reactionary game. Mm -hmm. The target's sitting there. Ball's not moving. Sure. So we need to be proactive. Like you need to have a task that you can commit to. Okay. When you don't have that, if I don't have, like, I know I need to be here and that's going to go X amount of yardage, mm -hmm. then it can just become more speculative. Sure. Like, oh, don't screw this up or more of an anticipation of where it is gonna go. Mm -hmm. Which essentially is when you get target focus, we'll call that, mm -hmm. that's what it more is gonna become, more of a stressor than an actual good thing. Sure. 
You follow me? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the first thing I want to introduce and what's good for all sensors is what's called a player side focus. Essentially, really defining a task that he can commit to so he has confidence in what he's doing to get the ball to the target. So players like him essentially get stressed from the target because they don't have control to get it there. So we're going to really work to define what he can really commit to. You know, it can be clock, it can be just you know, chest high, sure. hip high, you yeah. know, that's where getting your own definition could be a little better, but you know, where the feel can come into that now is like kind of working within those parameters. Mm -hmm. So like if this is 60, you know, knowing like a little more 65. Sure, definitely. But now we have a task to commit to and like just going, I know if I get there, it's mm -hmm. gonna be money. 60 degree, maybe a little past nine to three mm -hmm. to hit at 65. Flew right around 65. Yeah, right? Yeah. So and then from there, just starting to kind of build this a little bit. So now I would always just kind of feel that right before. Yep. There's my spot and then go. In terms of like a pre-shot routine mm -hmm. type thing? Or even just like what Justin Thomas does before. Just, yeah. you, know, you can do it right before the swing or just that's your rehearsal. Sure. But it's just to remember this goes 65. Right, so like if I'm trying to get a little past nine and just kind of try to yeah. rotate to there and then Yeah. Can't argue with that. Right. So now, that just again, we're just kind of getting loosened and we'll get mm -hmm. more depth of the practice stuff. But now let's start to vary it. Sure. So let's go to the four, the base of the diamond of targets there. Okay. And we'll start to see now if we can, you know, see a new distance, yep. alter that length. Sure. But what we want to start to judge at the beginning of this is just are you truly committed to like that spot? Okay. Got this, it. This is that number. Make sure you rehearse that feel and then we'll get it. Yeah, that felt better. Ooh, yeah, that was pretty much on it. Missed it by what? A foot? Yep. Oh, I love that. Now, one thing, you know, that I've had conversations with people about is learning kind of, let's say, nine to three with a square face is 70 yards, nine to three with like, you know, it's a little bit of a feel thing, but a little bit open is 62 or something mm -hmm. like that. Is that something that you would stay away from? Is that something you would kind of agree with? I mean, at the end of the day, dude, I just think it's what are you comfortable with? You know, if you're sitting over this shot, again, especially as a, you know, we'll, again, we'll get more in depth, but as somebody who's a feeler, tends to overthink things, Yep. right? So if you're in here and now you're like, well, is this here with open or is this here right. with shut? Like you start getting those extra variables in there. Yep. That's just gonna, do nothing but bring doubt. Yep. And that's definitely something I do is like every little, like at P2 is my club face square and all mm. that stuff that, you know, if you understand it, it's great, but if you let it get too complicated, it's trouble. Well, yeah. So what we really want to do is work on these concepts and then take it immediately to the golf course and put this into action and just see how it does out there because every level it's practice, then the golf course with no pressure, and then the golf course with pressure. So we're going to start by just taking it out there and see how he does with these processes. And then again, same deal. I want to see if you can keep your, your just visualizing yeah. that length of swing. Just okay. really work on that width in, yep. in the visualization. Yep. Yep. So we, we got to pin down, is that a feel or is it a visual? Because we can do it more, we can feel it, we can visualize it, we can just think, get to here. I almost think it's better for me as a feel, because okay. if I start trying to visualize, that's when I start to get mechanical. Perfect. So like, you know, I, if I were to try to exaggerate this feel, like I'm pretty confident that if I feel that, I'm gonna hit a good shot, where if I look at it on camera and I go, ooh, that looks ugly, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna trust it anymore. Yeah, yeah, right on. Ooh, I would, I would be okay with that. That's a birdie. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. That's a birdie. All right, let's make sure that wasn't lucky. Okay, did you stick to everything you needed to do? I did. Okay. And I didn't hit it perfect either, but I felt like the process was good enough that, you know, even yeah. a little bit of a mishit's gonna produce a good result. That's the thing, man, we don't need to be perfect. Right. Right. 
Say that to me a million more times, maybe it'll go through my skull. <laughs> well, there's, there's your perfect example, right? Yeah. Like, I didn't hit it perfect, but I'm sitting, I mean, that can't be more than three feet. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a lot of room between that we want that to link that process. If you're going to be perfect anywhere, we want the process to be perfect. Agreed. I hit that one too hard. Got anything change on that one? I, I felt like the process was similar. I just wasn't as, in terms of my feel, I wasn't as specific with feeling where I wanted the swing to go lengthwise. So like I was more. But that's the most important part. Right, and I think what happened is when I took that last look, I got target oriented mm -hmm. rather than getting that feel orientation. Perfect. So we're defining some stuff out here, man. I think we are, I kind of like it. So it's really cool to see how good he's getting at evaluating so quickly. So you can hear him say like he just wasn't in the right mindset for that shot and now he can link that to a miss, which is really important because he's starting to link success to where his focus goes. That's huge. Another three footer. Pretty good. Yeah, that's solid. You're going to stay into your own world like we're blocking this out. Okay. Again, even if I'm just talking about stupid stuff. Drunken trips at Pinehurst, 1% whoop scores. Don't chunk this. Don't miss it left. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good though, right? No, it was a good shot. Yeah. So again, I mean, three of those are, I mean, legitimate birdie. Yeah. Like, no, definitely. You know, and then two are off. But again, the, seeing this stuff in real time is yep. pr pretty cool, right? Yeah. And it's small adjustments too. That's that's kind of the thing that I like the most. Yeah. Is it's not like we're overhauling anything. Yeah. So thank you for watching this first episode of Quest to Be the Best with Michael Vanderland. And we got some really cool stuff coming up in terms of building his confidence, his self-image. We're gonna do some awesome exercises and practice and then some on-course work to really solidify that. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up, so make sure you're subscribed so you can see all the newest episodes when they drop. And if you haven't yet, make sure you go to mentalgolftype.com, get your free assessment and get your mental golf type so you can follow along because this stuff is so personalized to you and how you are wired and you can really see that throughout this series how personalized his trainings could be to him but you can also learn a lot of really cool stuff for yourself as well so thank you again for watching we'll see you in the next episode